It's Thursday, October uh, 4. It's Friday, but it's Thursday in my podcast world. Welcome to This Week with Drew. Thanks a lot for tuning in on This Week. We got big news. And how was my week? And yeah, let's just start the motherfucking show. Hey, let's start the show. Let's start the motherfucking dirty ass show. I'm a grimy ass New York rapper. And I'm a... Uh, that's gross. Hi, welcome to another episode of This Week with Drew. This is for Thursday, October 3rd. It's kind of... It's kind of... It's fucking going to shake. And then you go to shake your VLT. And you fucking put a pickle egg in your mouth. And you fucking have the pickle egg in your mouth. When you go to shake, you eat the pickle egg and put it in your mouth. Thanks a lot for tuning in or listening or watching. This is for Thursday, October 3rd, 2019, and I'm uploading it on Friday and also recording it on Friday because I've had a lot fucking going on this week. Big week. Let's just get into it right now and we will say, how was my week? It was pretty good. How was my week? Well, fuck. We fucking didn't win the Series XM Top Comic. Hey, eh? fucking win some, you lose some, buddy. I went up last, which is, uh, I'm not going to make an excuse. You know, I've won comedy contests from going last before. I've also won comedy contests from going bullet. And I've also lost uh, pretty much every comedy contest I've ever been in. So I wasn't too concerned. Just wanted to go up there and have a good showing. Went up there and I had a good showing. Uh, don't really have too much else to say. The theater was nice. We got there. There was sandwiches and snacks in the back. My best friend, Danny Martinello was there with me. He was my plus one. And, uh, yeah, it was nice just to be, it was nice just to be involved. So we'll see. Um, the Canadian comedy industry is a very yearly cyclical thing. There's only, um, two, two times a year where they look at you <clears throat> and this is the resulting stuff. So now we're waiting for next year. Uh, as the Canadian comedy industry goes, if you didn't get it this year, well, fucking wait till next year. So I'm going to wait till next year, um, <laughs> which is fine. I don't care. Everything's stupid and nothing matters. Fuck your goals and accomplishments. They are meaningless. I had a fun time co-hosting Sophie Buttle's podcast, Obsessed with Sophie Buttle. You could check out her podcast, Obsessed, on iTunes. She's a very funny comedian. She was one of the winners, but um, we're very good friends. And had a fun time hosting her podcast with Mark Little. It was a live podcast, which I want to do a live this week with Drew. But I, I want to do it just me and the camera and pretend like there's no audience there and just fucking bang her on right down the pipe just like I normally do and just pretend like there's absolutely no crowd anywhere. <laughs> have my little tripod set up so yeah so we lost the fucking contest so i was doing sober september and i was and uh, me and kelly taylor also funny comedian from saskatchewan who had a good set too win or lose you fucking hit the booze right so ended up having a bunch of drinks on thursday there uh my buddy joel oh yeah shout out to my patrons john greg i john mike and uh, my street name is Bubba Marnus and uh, Bubba Marnus and Tunde. I was about to say Bubba Marnus and Breeze. And uh, oh, and PG and Calm of uh, Brothers Grimm 118. And anybody else? And Bryce Finkus is in there now. Two Bryce is up in there. Anybody else who wants a shout out, if you want a shout out on the podcast, then fucking join my Patreon army. Or, you know, just be an OG motherfucker from the hood. Anybody from 118 gets an insta shout out from me. This 118 bullshit persona that you've crafted. <laughs> Still not talking to my parents um, over the Edmonton Journal incident from last month. They were not thrilled at the article. In the article, in my interview, I had <laughs> told the reporter that uh, I came from Beverly, Northside, whatever, where there's lots of drug dealers and, uh, and rig pigs. And he equated that with me saying that that was my only choice of career um, because I had said that there was lots of that going on in the north side, which there is. Um, and uh, my parents decided to internalize that as me saying that they are bad parents and provided me with a poor uh, upbringing. <laughs> so, uh, still not talking to them about that. That's fine. They've been mad at me over things in the past that I've done to entertain people. Sex Talk with Sterling and Drew. That was a podcast that I used to do with Sterling Scott. 
that was very troublesome. Um, my mom told me that I was a pornographer and that most pornographers have the decency to change their name so as not to bring shame on their family. So that was good. Uh, I've been through there. I've been through that. <laughs> And now we're going through this, but it's my mom's birthday coming up uh, in a couple days. So I sent her a card already. I wonder if it made it. I sent her a card. I'm going to send her a card. I'm not going to phone her. It, I know it seems mean, right? It seems mean, but here's what you got to do with narcissistic parents is that you have to go either gray rock or low contact, man. I'm going. I'm not going no contact. I'm going low contact. VLC, very low contact. These are terms that I've used in my therapy to um, help deal with my situation. And uh, yeah, it's hard, man, because, uh, you know, you, you your parents, they do nice things for you um, and they help you out. But, uh, oh, Terry, is that Terry? Who's that? What's that? Hi, little guy. Don't knock over my camera. What's up? You want to say hi? Terry just came back from his walk. Hi, Terry. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> Terry, who's your parking guy? Stop it! I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish this. Terry's fucking been, uh, he had kennel cough the last couple days, which is very scary in a tiny little dog like that. He's a coughing up, and he was just, <laughs> and he was getting way too jacked up, and every time he got jacked up, he was just. <laughs> And then all this crap would come flying out, and he's, like, puking up, and he's just like, yeah. and you just feel so bad for him because he's just a little guy, man. And we were freaking out. Like, I was freaking out like he was going to die because I Googled the symptoms. And then, obviously, this is what I realized. Like, every thing that tells you medical advice has to say that your dog might have cancer because if they don't, then what if your dear dog did have cancer? <laughs> you know what I mean? They could be like, it's like, what is, it's like my dog's paw hurts. Like he's near, gnawing at his paw. They're like, well, he probably might have just stubbed his toe or, you know, fucking cancer. I don't know. I'm on the internet right now. I can't see your dog. So it could be nothing or it could be fucking cancer. I don't know. I'm the internet. <laughs> what the fuck do you want from me, buddy? <laughs> That's what the internet. That's why they just give you everything. It's like you could just have cancer or die because I don't fucking know. And if, uh, you know, I don't want to be liable for you actually having cancer or, and me saying that you were fine. Like, nah, you're fine. Like, you got blood coming out of your ears. You're like, nah, that goes away in a couple hours. <laughs> They're always going to go worst case scenario. They have to go worst case scenario. So, yes, I was talking about my parents, um, very low contact. It's nice. It feels nice to be in control of my own life um, and not live for other people's standards. That's what the thing is with the narcissist, man, is that they, they put you in this fucking – they put you in this little little position of, of – influence you know what i mean where they can influence you and if you remove yourself from that position then they start to freak out a little bit but their narcissistic tendencies will need them to find a new thing or a new place for that as soon as i went low contact they start flexing out on my sister and uh you know <clears throat> and then we got to mitigate that and i got to let her know it's like hey listen i'm going fucking low contact for a little bit so you're probably gonna be sharing a brunt of this because it's just a fucking outpouring of like shit that has to funnel somewhere <laughs> That's how I feel. <laughs> but they're nice. It's nice. And we'll figure it out soon. But just right now, I just need a break. And uh, I just can't. I'm just happier just living my own 30-year-old man life where I'm successful instead of living this existence where I'm not successful. I mean, come on, guys. You see my fucking LED lights? Bang, red, bang, boom. Can you see them? Oh, you probably can't see them. Is it working? I'm going to turn off one of these lights. Did I do this last week? I feel like I did this last week. I'm turning off this one too. Oh, now we're in the zone. Check that out. Buddy, I'm in the fucking orange, red, green zone. I'm in the red, green zone, buddy. Oh yeah. Oh, now we're in the fucking. <laughs> this is fun. Oh man, I just realized this is an audio podcast and nobody who isn't. If you're not watching this, then you don't know what's going on. I'm fucking changing the LED lights. In my uh, studio. <laughs> I got these LED strips. Oh, fuck. Hold up. 
I got these LED strip lights in my studio all along the bi- all along the floorboards, and it makes it look like a motherfucking nightclub up in this bitch. So if you or if you have a narcissistic person in your life and they are stressing you out with with all their fucking narcissistic bullshit, then all you need to do is either cuz narcissistic people they see the world as their own fucking play, you know what I mean? Like they're the stars of their own of their own movie and they need care a cast of characters to be interesting enough to, for them to deem worthy enough to keep around and if you're not interesting enough to them then they'll just let it go like this is also like i haven't called my parents in a month but they also haven't called me like it's like a fucking they know exactly what could that they're not going to get what they need from me so they just because we've been down this road before so it's like fuck it move on and they're able to just say fuck it and move on and i that used to hurt me when i was like wow how can you just not even you know give a fuck but it's not like they don't give a fuck they obviously still give a fuck about me and they want me to be loved and happy and healthy but um in their day to day you know they're like he's not giving me what i need so fuck him um that's kind of depressing <laughs> let's change it up do you guys hear something can you guys hear what you guys hear what you guys hear Time for Big News with Drew. Today's Big News is brought to you by not talking to your parents. <laughs> um, okay, today's Big News. Oh, what am I doing here? Fuck. Uh, okay, this one comes straight out of America. This is a heartbreaking but funny story. This is straight out. Of, this could only happen in like the South Texas. This is from Harris County, Texas. And murder suspect walks free for two weeks after ankle monitor is repossessed due to missed payments. That is the most fucking American thing that you could ever hear of. A guy who murdered somebody who was out on ankle monitoring house arrest um, was, got, was sent free for two weeks because he had to pay for his own ankle monitor. That's how fucked up America is, is that you murder somebody... And that you get charged with that murder, then you have to pay for your ankle monitor yourself to keep you at home because it's a capitalist country. And then if you miss those payments, the ankle monitor will be repossessed from you, thus freeing you. It's the dog is bitten its own fucking tail now, man. You're like, how can we squeeze the most amount of money out of these motherfuckers? And they're like, well, they can't have our gear. Isn't that so fucked up? That's so sad. This fucking guy was released on a $100,000 bond and required to wear a GPS monitoring device. And when he couldn't pay the monthly fee, the service provider guarding public service removed it without an order from the court. That's how the privatization of the justice system in the United States is such that a private company can literally reverse a court-mandated gps device isn't that fucked up man and they didn't and then and then they can just whatever they could just go in there and it's like whatever fuck you this is my thing this guy isn't paying it for it well i don't give a fuck if i'm not getting money then fuck him we'll let him walk free he's a murderer we don't actually give a fuck about people keeping people safe and shame on the fucking judicial system that outsourced justice to a private company to the point where they're gonna charge their own murder s- fucking suspects to keep themselves in jail man how the fuck does that even work so uh, the ve- many say that sa- uh, said that the blame lies with the vendor however guarding public safety has never failed to notify the property no uh, authorities when an ankle monitor is reviewed so they're saying like yo we sent immediate notifications of violations violations of the judge's order the pre-trial release immediate notification is sent when a monitor is removed but they're just fucking understaffed at the uh at the old uh fucking uh courthouse there Fuck, man, that is pretty funny. Walker's doing court Monday. So this guy was like, I ain't going nowhere. Like, I ain't got even enough money to pay for my own ankle bracelet. <laughs> Clearly, I ain't going anywhere. <laughs> That's so fucking sad, though, man. Um, That is a good way to just get out of shit. It's like, I just can't, I can't afford to be. I should have said that, man, when we were in, when Court and I were in Italy. We got fucking pinched for not having a bus ticket, which you guys probably, I probably talked about. 
Uh, I should just been like, I uh, don't have money. <laughs> no have cash for you. And then just see if they would have took me to jail. Fuck, I probably would have gone to jail over a bus ticket, man. I would have gone on some fucking... That would have been made some international news if I fucking got hauled off to jail for just not having a bus ticket. And then I just made a stink. They would have Amanda noxed me for sure. Italian cops are greasy. Like, American cops are violent and evil, but Italian cops are, like, greasy. They're, like, and like Mexican cops are, like, so fucking greasy. It's, like, you don't uh, sta- uphold the law in any way. <laughs> You're just here for your own personal benefit. I'm starting to think that you actually don't care about the justice system, sir, with your continual abuses. Um, okay, so that's it. I'm going to be on the road here, uh, coming up in, uh, October. I'm coming back to Edmonton, uh, Wednesday, October 16th. I'll be in Grand Prairie, Thursday, October 17th, Edmonton Comedy Festival, 18th, Edmonton Comedy Festival, 19th, Edmonton Comedy Festival. You can get your tickets online at edmontoncomedyfestival.com or some shit. Grand Prairie, Wednesday, the 16th, coming back. Grand Prairie, always a fucking good time. Gonna sell some merch. Got some more bird of teas. If I haven't fucking... If it ain't broke, don't fix it, man. Yeah, you know, I got a bunch of mur- bird of teas. The bird murderer. Been ripping. I do want to get some new merch. So if you guys know anybody who can fucking help me out with that. And, uh... What else are my dates? Uh, Edmonton. And... Then I'm going to fucking Mexico. And then I'm in Lethbridge. Lethbridge. November 21st, uh, we're get we're shaping up the winter tour here. So, fucking anyways, thanks a lot. That was This Week with Drew. I just fucking just got, I just fucking go to the drink and eat a bucket of from the drink. <laughs>